Wilderness camping takes many forms. Some people want to stay in an old rustic cabin with no electricity, no indoor plumbing. And you know, in, in modern times, having uh, some of the basic amenities would be a nice thing. There's nothing wrong with the old ways, but it's always nice to uh, have some modern conveniences. So, you know, having a shower and a kitchen and a toilet, that kind of thing can be very nice. And, you know, you can bring your pets, keep your pets if you want. And, uh, you know, there's always the issue of bathroom chores. And uh, this, the old style privies work pretty well. But, um, you know, it's, you're, you're stuck in one place. And uh, it's, uh, you might want to get out and see the world. So if, if you're kind of had enough of the old cabin and want to check out new vistas, then uh, getting yourself a little camper that can go off-road might be a good solution. So, I'm going to show you this camper that I got for the back of my truck. I got it in January of 2022. It took about seven months to get it after I ordered it. I'm very happy with it. It was built by Overland Campers, OVR. LND campers of Flagstaff, Arizona. And I'm going to show you uh, what I did to finish off the inside, how it pops up, and uh, electrical system, a little bit of the plumbing, and the uh, ventilation and heating, all of that. So my truck is a 2003. Silverado. It's got about 160,000 miles on it now. Um, bought it. Uh, it was an auction truck, formerly owned by a, one of the counties in Florida. And it took some money to get it up to snuff, but it's working pretty well now. And I've taken it as far as from Florida to California and back, and up to uh, the Washington, D.C. area and back, and Tennessee a couple times and I'm just in in the almost three weeks I've been sleeping in the truck and so it's a little bit messy uh, a little rough around the edges but I want to show you what I did so here we go so to raise the roof there's six latches and there's also some safety cables under each latch that hold the solar panels down in case something I hit something and the, the, they might come loose. So basically it's easy to unlatch them but you got to remember to relatch them um, when you're after you put it down you can't become distracted. It's like checklist on an airplane. You have to make sure everything is completely latched after you lower the roof. So, okay, that's all six latches. And then I um, open up the back. Okay, so I'll show you how easy it is to lift up. And basically, there's these lift springs that balance some of the weight of the roof. With the solar panels on, I estimate that the roof and the solar panels together weigh about with all the inside, stuff on the inside, the fan, the solar panels and things, about 150 pounds, something like that. And the fabric, I'm also lifting the fabric. So, I climb inside.
and that's pretty much it. So not too difficult to lift it up. I, you know, once I lift it, I normally open up the window, so I'll do a little of that, and then I'll show you the inside. So um, I try to keep the exterior simple uh, and clean, not hang a bunch of stuff off. I do sometimes uh, do my camping in the parking lots of uh, Walmarts and Cracker Barrels, and uh, so I kind of want to be a little bit unobtrusive. Uh, if I'm in a rest stop, I can close everything up and take a quick nap. Um, I'm going to show you the, the uh, service hatch here, which I have a winter setup and a summer setup. And right now, I carry a water, to, water hose to refill the tanks, and I have a 50-foot extension cord. The shore power port is right here. And I'm set up now for the winter mode, which... Uh, this is being filmed in November and just had some 26 degrees was my lowest temperature and I have a diesel heater. So the truck is gasoline, but it, I carry this and five gallons that lasts me about 10 to 15 days, uh, running at 12 hours at, at the lowest possible setting. So I'm, I'm real happy with the way this has been working. And in the summer, I take out, um, and you'll see the inside, the diesel heater on the inside, but in the summer I take out this panel and remove, take the fuel tank out, and I put a 5,000 BTU air conditioner. And I have it set up so that I can leave the hatch open and it will um, not allow the rain in. And so that it's pretty well protected unless it's a really hard rain. I can either have the air conditioner in there in the, in the summer, Assuming I have an, enough power, and in the winter, I use the diesel heater. And so along the back side of the camper, I, you know, there's always a lot of dirt that you track in, you know, right in, like right in straight into your living room. So I have this little, I don't have a lot of garage space, but I have a little bit for large bulky items right here in the back. And... Um, I carry at least uh, 40 liters of water. I have two 20-liter uh, two, uh, water containers, and I have a pump, um, a SureFlow pump that pressurizes the system. You can kind of see the little bit of the bottom of the sink. I'll show you more of that. I have a 12-volt, 44-liter uh, is it 44 liter, 44 quart, something, uh, DC refrigerator that works really well. I'm very happy with it. It has, uses about 45 watts when the compressor is running and almost no, and nothing really when it's just idling. Fire extinguisher, important for me. I also have a smoke detector and a, and a carbon monoxide detector. So the, the camper was began life, I originally had a cab height camper, and you may have seen the video of camping at Chilhowee with a cab height camper, and I really didn't like the idea that I couldn't stand up. So underneath, in the back, I have a bunch, bunch, a bunch of milk crates with different stuff in. I can hold six, six or eight milk crates, and it's not easy to get to, uh, especially if it's raining and you can't get out the back, but... Um, it does offer a lot of storage, and I can still have enough height with the popped with the top popped to uh, stand up inside. So, if I need to take a shower, I turn on the pump, and I do have pressurized water. Hose is not very long, but I can shower if I need to. At least rinse off, and. So, pressurized water is really nice, and I have a whole filtration system that the water in those tanks goes through a sediment filter, goes through a screen inside the tanks on the pickup hose, and then through uh, the pump to a sediment filter and a carbon filter, and then it comes, for the drinking water, I have a, a UV filter that I'll show you more of in a minute. 
Okay, so here we are inside the camper. I have two fans for ventilation. All the four windows in the fabric sidewalls are screened. In addition, they have clear glass plastic windows and, uh, and a privacy cover as well. And I have a max air fan here that I can, is reversible. And um, I have a little USB chart rechargeable fan that oscillates and keeps me cool. And you're seeing the bed in the east-west sleeping configuration. And I'll show you I'll show you it pulled out after I give you more of the tour. But um, I have my I do the bucket toilet technique. I have two buckets, one to sit on and one to store the supplies in and the waste material in. It's got a good gasket on the lid and that keeps it from stinking up the place. Um, I do have um, access to the cooler. The only thing I don't have access to is the milk crates down below and I generally pull out what I need for that. The sink, uh, it's got a strainer. I try, and it, it goes, connects to a gray water um, collapsible five gallon uh, container underneath the floor there and get water like that. Oh, did I turn it on or did I turn it off? Yeah, I turned it off. There it is. So I have uh, pressurized water and that works very well. The umbilical here is a, a way to deal with all the electric on the roof. I have uh, some radio antennas and uh, LED lights and reading lights that are over the bed with rechargeable ports. Um, and I'll show you the lights on the ceiling. Maybe you can kind of see I have two white lights on either side that go the full length. And there's the smoke detector and carbon monoxide detector. And I insulated the ceiling with Reflectix and I thought about doing a headliner but it just seemed like a lot of effort and in case I need to get to something it wouldn't be so easy. So I use the white lights um, some of the time, but a lot of times in the evening I just use the, uh, the red light to try and, preserve, try and preserve my night vision, which works well if you're going in and out of the camper to other places. And I, I hope to, I prefer camping in areas that are really nice and dark. So I'll show you the basic electrical. I have a um, lithium iron phosphate battery that goes that's in the toolbox here. A um, 300 watts of solar, um, a fuse panel, lot, everything's fused and I have a, a Renogy 2000 watt inverter that unfortunately on this trip after just limited use um, I'd say a total of 10 hours use that just stopped working. So hopefully um, I'm going to be able to get that repaired under warranty. I bought it about three or four months ago and uh, this is a, my second trip trying to use it and it gave up when all I was doing was boiling some water using a, um, I use a induction cooktop um, trying to cut back on the propane. So and you see the rheostats for the ceiling lights and charge controller. I'm real happy with the charge controller. It works really, really well. I have a battery monitor system with a shunt that tells me how much I'm using. Capacity of the batteries is about 250 amps, amp hours. I, I built the battery myself with uh, Chinese cells off of AliExpress. I don't really recommend that, but it, it worked out okay. Um, one of the things I did when I ordered the camper was I had the window put in because I like the idea of being able to get in between the cab and the camper and I actually changed the rear window of my truck from a solid uh, window to one that had an operable center section. So in the toolbox, um, I, I'll open it up and let you see. Here's my battery and it's mostly car stuff in here. I have like a bus bar for the positive and um, the battery uh, will prowse. I 
follow his YouTube channel and he um, kind of gave me the confidence to try and assemble my own battery. I have a, a uh, overkill battery management system and that's also worked very well. Software is a little bit, takes a little getting used to, um, but it's, it has worked very well and I feel like it's very safe. So I have a couple of uh, chargers and I have, I can charge the camper battery from the alternator of the truck or from just the solar and right now I have it disconnected from the alternator um, and I can also using a, a smart relay I can jump the truck if the truck starting battery is dead I can jump that so this is all the different things I need to maintain the truck while I'm on the road Sp some pair, spare parts fuses some tools works good here's the diesel heater setup and I was kind of nervous about having wood and around the, these really hot elements. But I used some mineral fiber insulation and fire caulking and things like that to uh, make sure that the exhaust is very well um, isolated from the wood. And I've really been happy with the diesel heater. I, I got, did get down to 26. I've had lots and lots of days in the mid 30s and uh, especially up, up in Tennessee and uh, spent a lot of time up there and uh, up in the high elevations well relatively high 2,000 feet or so and um, it worked really well I'm very thrilled with not having I had a Mr. Buddy heater and that was really just too hot this is just right I would say anything above freezing this is more than adequate and it'll keep me from freezing to death, even I would say down into the teens, but I won't necessarily be as comfortable unless I do all the stuff I would do, let's say, in a tent in terms of a good sleeping bag and wearing long johns and all that stuff. So um, one of the things I've, I've encountered is that I'm not going to power on the, the diesel heater right now, but the charging voltage that the... Uh, charge controller does is about 14.6 volts and that's too much for some of the electronics um, in in the camper diesel heater doesn't really want much more than 12 or 13 and I did have a failure of the water treatment system I used a um, the the UV device here is um, only good up to a little over 13 volts. So I'm using regulators for the diesel heater and for the UV water treatment and for the max air fan. You can see I put a regulator, voltage regulator inside and that is to protect the motherboard of the fan. I've heard of those things being damaged by voltage that's too high. So one thing I don't have is a lot of accessible storage here. I do put some stuff here and there and um, that's worked out good. So for off-roading, well over here I have two Max Track boards. They're not actually not the real Max Tracks but uh, same idea, traction boards. I keep a tent in case something happens where I'm not able to sleep in the camper uh, for whatever reason I can I have a small uh, tent that works well my trekking poles this right here in the gray is a arctic kit that can can velcro in and I have not used it if I was going to be in cold weather in the same place for a while maybe more than three or four days and I would definitely uh, try and use the Arctic Pack. But I think it's, it's quite a chore to install it. So the cargo net is where I put the bedding if, when I put the top down so they can air out a little bit uh, and not be squished by the top. I have very little, very little uh, space to collapse. The bedding is made up of two two-inch mattresses and I have a friend that is a hot air balloon pilot 
that happens, I was lucky enough that he has, uh, he sells foam and he let me try about 10 different types of high density foam. Did not use memory foam. I did not, I do not find memory foam very comfortable, but I used a high density foam that uh, has just been perfect. And so in the east-west configuration that you see now, I end up with two two inch pads, but even two inches is enough. And the, the pad that I, over the toolbox is what I sleep on. I'll take a nap and I'll show you how that is set up in just a moment. This is with the sleeping platform fully extended. It's a, in between a queen size and a king size bed. Um, I did make the mattresses there. At the time that I ordered the camper, they weren't available from Overland Camper, but they are, you can now order them as part of the, the camper. I had to select the foam and select the fabric and get it all sewed up and uh, cut to fit. And, and uh, it worked out pretty nice. Very durable uh, fabric and I have, I just use uh, king size sheets on it and it works good. I'm not gonna make the bed for the video, sorry guys. Um, and you can see the reading lights and they have a charging, USB charging port so I can recharge the, the oscillating fan or there, any little devices, plug in my phone and uh, definitely room enough for two up here. So, And you can sit up in bed which is nice. Um, that's really uh, a nice, nice feature that this is high enough to do that. And good ventilation with the windows on either side. Okay, so I put the, the uh, bed panel back and um, see I have the bedding. One of the reasons I like to keep the bedding in the net is so that I have it accessible when I'm in stealth mode. And stealth mode is really, if I'm stopping at a rest stop because I've been driving for three or four hours and I didn't sleep great the night before and I want to take a half hour cat nap, I can do that and I'll show you how, even with the top down. So I'm going to show you how I lower the top. It's really pretty easy. One thing that you do have to be careful of is you put the bungees here to help draw in the, draw in the sides. So you don't want to leave fabric sticking out the edges. So you have to kind of pull the fabric in a little bit as you lower it. So I pull it partially down and I give it a tug on the left and the right to make sure that it's well inside the roof when it settles down and I pull it down it kind of brace it a little bit and so that part is down and then same thing especially in the back um, the sink I forgot to put the sink down but that works pretty easily and I'm going to make sure the pump is off fold down the faucet and there we go so ready to lower the top part and once again pull the fabric in from from the edges so that it doesn't stick out the bungees help with that and it comes down and lock the flap and then what you're able to do, so let's say I just pulled into a rest stop, is I can pull this mattress here and set it up and I can sleep on this. And one of the things is I'm able to cover all the windows. The outside window here closes up and I can make it pretty dark and pretty stealthy. And I still have the fan directly over me that I can use either to blow down or to suck out air, in, intake or exhaust, and it works really well. So that's how I do it. If I'm in stealth mode, I just pull out a pillow. If it's cold, I have the covers. I can still access the sink a little bit, get some food in the refrigerator, and so, it's not bad. I guess if it was really cold, I might even camp like this without popping the top. And then it's a smaller space to heat and the fabric isn't exposed on the outside, so I have it better insulated. So that's the camper, pretty much everything. So thank you for watching. Perfect, thank you, Judy.
Do you want to emphasize that you could use your heater or AC when it's closed? I meant... Um, I probably could, but could maybe I'll put in a caption or something. Yeah, you said you used the fan, so I yeah. think you might say you could use the... Put it in as a caption, that's a good idea. I'll put it in as a caption, yeah. but I don't want to yeah, <laughs> burn out. This is hard to do. Yeah. Hard for you, hard for me. And uh, let me turn the... So you're going to... That stays open, that's right. Yeah, are. so that I don't have a right. blind spot. So you want me to... We can reload your truck over as we're exiting rather than right here with the link he may come out and then because i'll be following did you see him sleeping like a baby yeah i went in there and um he's sleeping like a pig more than a baby. <laughs>